What's up everyone, welcome to part 3 of our pandas tutorial series and in this one we're going to talk about data types or D types for short. So for those of you who are familiar with NumPy, you'll know that each NumPy array has a D type specified which could be things like integers, floats, date times, and a few other ones. But the reason I bring this up is because each pandas data frame is composed of series which are essentially NumPy arrays, so they also have a D-type specified. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to read the D-type, how to change the D-type, how to set the D-type of our index, and also talk about why you would want to change these things. So let's get started. So you may have heard that Python is a dynamically typed language. And what that means is when you create a Python object, you don't have to specify the type because the interpreter will always check for you. And you can always change the type on the fly. So for example, if you start with a integer, you can change that object to a float, to a dictionary, to a list, whatever you want. And the interpreter is always keeping track of this. But this flexibility comes at a cost. And that cost is that Python objects are gonna take up more room in memory and it's gonna take a little bit more CPU to process them. Whereas with a statically typed language, these objects can be smaller in memory and there's not all this checking because since they're statically typed, you don't need to constantly check, is this an integer, is it a float? Because it's never going to change. So with that flexibility, we're giving up a little bit of performance. But with NumPy arrays, we can specify the D type so what that means is for a chunk of data, we can specify the D-type and by specifying it, we can shrink down its size and memory. And when we do operations on it, we don't need to do all that checking for which type it is. And as a result, we can speed up computation with NumPy arrays and also, like I said, shrink their size and memory. So that's the big advantage of working with NumPy arrays. And I know I gave the one minute description of D-types, but you can read more about it in the NumPy docs, which I'll link in the description. But with that being said, since Pandas is built on NumPy, we want to make sure our data frames have a D-type specified. And we want to make sure that D-type specified is not an object, unless we're dealing with string data. But if we're dealing with numeric data, we want to make sure the D-type is integer or float. And for our index, if we're working with time series data, we want to make sure it's a NumPy date time. So let's jump over to a new notebook and give you an example of what I mean by this. So here I have a blank notebook and I'm just going to start by importing pandas as pd. And then what I'm going to do is just read from our CSV file from before. So I'm just going to call it df and it's going to be equal to pd.read underscore CSV and I resaved it as another file name. So the file name was, they called it new df.csv. And what I'm going to do is specify the index. Well, first let's just take a look at it again. So if I do df.head, you can see here that we have the year column and then for each other column, it's a country. And then these values here are the emissions of CO2 and kilotons. So if I were to, if I want to check what the type is of each column, I could just do df.dtypes. So now you can see here I'm returned a series. And for the year, the D type is an N64. And then for all the other ones, they're float 64s except for this Monaco. So we'll look into that in a little more detail, but the rest of them are all float 64s. So the first thing I want to do is instead of the year being an N64, I want to make this a date time object. And I also want to make it our index column because we're dealing with time series data. So the index should be a time series and the type should be date time. So the way we can do that is first, we're going to specify the index column. So the index column is going to be year. And then also there's a flag or an argument called 
called parse parse date. So what we will do is we want, so the dates that we want to parse is the years column. So now when we run this and we call df.head, you can see now our index is, is the years column and you can see that it's in, um, it gives the year, month, and date. So if we wanted to check the D type of this, we just do df.index. And you can see here, it returns the index and the D type specified right here, which you can see is a date time 64 with resolution nanoseconds. So now you can see our index has a D type of date time. So with pandas, just by default, by specifying the index column and using this flag parse dates, it has a pretty sophisticated method for parsing the date. So you could, as long as it's somewhat of a valid form of a date time or a date, pandas can figure out how to parse it. So it could just be years, it could be like a date time where it's the date and the time, and pandas is smart enough to work with it. One note is the only thing that it's it struggles with is when you have time zone information, you probably will get a deprecation warning saying, okay, soon we're not gonna be supporting these time zones. So in that case, we'll have to figure out something down the road, but for the most part, it can handle just about any form of a date time. So now let's dig a little deeper into that one column that was an object. So the one that was an object was the Monaco column. So if I scroll down and look at all the entries, you can see that the last one for 2014, it says blank. So what this is, is that what I did was purposely put some text here just to give it a good example to work with. So because this is no longer numeric data, it's changing the D type to object. So by default, if it can't figure out what the D type is, it's just gonna default to the basic NumPy object. But this isn't what we wanna work with because like we said, Python objects are not ideal. They're bigger and they're slower to work with. So we want to fix this. So what we can do is there's a feature called to numeric. So we want to change this thing to numeric data. So the way we do that is we wanna set this series equal to numeric data. So we'll just call pd.2 to numeric. And what we're gonna do is pass the series that we want, which is the Monaco series. And then if we just run it like this, you'll see that we'll get an error. And that's because it's erroring on that blank string. You can see here, it's unable to parse this string blank. So what we can do instead is we want it to, when it gets to that error, we want it to, re it to replace it with a NAN or not a number. And you'll see why we want to do that. So we can add this flag that says errors and we want it to coerce. So coerce means anytime you find an error, replace it with a NAN. So now when we run this, it runs successfully. And then if we were to call df.monaco, you can see that the blank object or the blank entry now says NAN, but also you'll notice that the D type is float 64. And that's because even though it doesn't look like NAN is a float. So because of that, we now have the correct D type. Now let's say we want to change the D type of an existing column. So for example, let's say we want to change the D type of the Germany column. Well, the way we do that is we just set it equal to itself and then we add the as type function. And then all we need to do is specify which D type we want. So I'm going to select int 64. And now if we take a look at Germany, you can see that the numbers are now integers and the D type is 64. So you can use the as type method or as type feature to change the type of one column to another. And that's assuming that you're dealing with numeric data. So if you don't have numeric data, you have to use the to numeric function in order to change it. 
And if you have something that'll throw an error, you can set the error to coerce. So that way it'll return a NAN. And then at least you're now dealing with float 64 data. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, we've covered how to specify the index column and how to parse the date. So that way we get date time index and then also how to manipulate the D-type for our columns. And the next one will continue more with how to slice and manipulate the data in our data frame and do a little more plotting and just look at some real world examples to get a better feel for it. So like always, if you have any comments, leave them below. Also, feel free to use the Facebook group. If you like the video, give it a like. And if you really like the video, then hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys, see ya.